Dave Scott, and for the next 10 minutes, we're going to take a look at the phenomenon known as Reynoldsburg Fall Homecoming Week. Located in the south central part of the Columbus suburb that considers itself the birthplace of the commercial tomato, RHS is among the most spirited and diverse high schools in central Ohio. Reynoldsburg High is a modern campus style high school that houses 1,200 energetic students from grades 10 through 12. The student has the opportunity to take classes in seven different areas, learning in a classroom environment that promotes harmony and equality between all races, creeds, colors, and even ages. School spirit runs high at Reynoldsburg. Students scream themselves into a frenzy at every pep assembly. Whenever the band plays the pep fight song, the entire student body will stand and clap along. This signifies the strong school unity found at RHS. That same spirit and unity shows when students support Raider sports teams. Leading the Raider sports pack are a resurgent football team that rose from being the jokes of the prestigious Ohio Capital Conference to being consistent contenders for the league title. Other sports vying for the hearts of Raider sports fans are the two-time defending district champion girls basketball team and a boys basketball team that came a half-court shot away from a league title. RHS also boosts a girls tennis team who recently won a fourth consecutive league title and a volleyball program that is among the strongest in the state of Ohio. Although spirit is high here the whole year round, the one week of the year in which spirit just overflows is of course fall homecoming week. How much spirit? Just take a look. the powder puff game between the underclassmen and the seniors and we have a bonfire after that queen ceremony at the game and we also sponsored the dance on that Saturday the days of the week we have our commercials for them and we always try to make them humorous so people want to participate student council promoted the days of the week by taking advantage of the school's closed circuit television morning announcements by airing commercials advertising each day of the week the spot starred Steve Ferguson as the Phantom of Homecoming, a mysterious character who appeared around campus trying to ruin Homecoming Week. Students battled back with dress-up day items such as school jackets, flip-flops, and hockey masks. Here is a sample of a student council commercial advertising Twins Day. popular events of Reynoldsburg's homecoming week is the powder puff game. On Wednesday of each homecoming week, a team of underclassmen girls attempt to match skills with a senior team in a flag football game. Throughout the years, powder puff night has become a night for students to veg out for some wacky fun. While the girls play ball, guys transform themselves into cheerleaders and the band becomes, well, they become something. Even the Energizer Bunny showed up for the last powder puff game. It may be fun and games off the field, but on the field, you better bet it's all business. After all, bragging rights are on the line. 
after the underclass pulled ahead 14 to 6 in the final two minutes, Angel Moore went the length of the field in two plays to score for the seniors. Unfortunately, the pitch for the two-point conversion was just wide, leaving the underclass jubilant. The seniors, however, were not as pleased. Those lovely Powder Puff cheerleaders returned two days later for Friday's pep assembly. Both the senior and underclass squads performed cheer and dance routines. After the cheerleaders gave the crowd a few chuckles, the student body settled back for a few more laughs in the teacher skit. The skit was a parody of the blockbuster movie Home Alone featuring nine-year-old whiz kid Ronnie Pavlov. The basic premise for the skit was to do a takeoff on Home Alone with the little boy at home being the son of the football coach and he decides not to go to the game and watch his TV instead. But we wanted to tie it in with Mount Vernon in some way and so the first thought was to have uh, have somebody for him to fight since in the movie Home Alone the boy uh, is fighting someone breaking into the house in order to, to retain that theme. The logical thing to do would be to have the opposing team break in to get the game plans. After all the fun and games were over it was time for the football coach Ohio Hall of Fame member Bob Stewart to get down to business and pump up the crowd about that night's homecoming game. The preseason favorites to win the league, the Raiders were coming off a disappointing loss to a team they were favored to beat. The stands overflowed with alumni that night and they were not disappointed because... What better therapy for the Raiders than a game against winless and hapless Mount Vernon? Was moving the ball much of a problem? No prob. Jeff Stewart hits Dan Keynes on the first play from scrimmage. How about scoring? Hey, no problem. Freshman running sensation, Jeff knows Bow, Bow, Bowman. Scampers for 39 yards on the second play from scrimmage for the touchdown. How about defense for Mount Vernon? Big problemo. Jeff Bowman plows over for five yards for the second touchdown for the Raiders. Any more problems? Not for the Raiders because Bo has gotten to know the end zone. Jeff Bowman with his third touchdown from one yard out. Bowman would collect 148 yards in addition to his three touchdown, an outstanding career ahead of the freshman sensation. By now, Mount Vernon was thinking, hey, watch 19, watch 19, but they forgot to think. Watch number 20, Jeff Cummings, the area leading receiver with the 54-yard pass reception for the touchdown at the end of the half. On the other side of the ball, no problem for the Raiders, big problem for Mount Vernon. Kurt Scheider recovers the Mount Vernon fumble, and Brian Martindale also intercepted a Yellow Jacket pass. Back on offense, Raider quarterback Jeff Stewart was red hot, hitting Brad Bedreau for his second touchdown pass of the night. Stewart and Cummings would kick back and relax for the rest of the game after hooking up once again for another touchdown pass as the Raiders jolted, jammed, and more or less wailed away at the Yellow Jackets by a score of 42 to 14. Now there's more to a homecoming game than just that game. Among the hundreds of graduates that return to RHS are the alumni cheerleaders as well as the alumni band members who perform at halftime along with the regular band. And of course, just like every other high school, Reynoldsburg crowns its homecoming queen at halftime. And who would reigning queen Nikki Carter crown as the new Reynoldsburg homecoming queen? Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we have been awaiting. Our new homecoming queen, Susie Underwood, is the senior class president and the captain of the varsity cheerleading team. She is very active in her church and is a Sunday school teacher. The traditional dance ended what may have been the most spirited fall homecoming yet. That is until fall homecoming 1992 at Rogerland. Until then, so long.